Every name on every headstone represents a life. And within every plot, there is a story. Come walk with me and bring the past to life. Hello, this is Matt, your Grave Explorations host. As work continues on my next all-new video, I'm going to take you on a trip back to revisit the tale of notorious killer Louise Peet, who was executed for her crimes in 1947. It's an incredible story that feels like it was taken from the pages of a pulp crime magazine. It originally appeared in Part 1 of my exploration of Angelus Rosedale Cemetery. A link to the full video should appear in the upper right corner of your screen right about now. Sit back and enjoy, and I will see you in the next Grave Exploration. There is a lonely section of Rosedale where a wanderer might notice a sudden change in atmosphere. Here the sun doesn't shine quite so bright, birds do not sing, and the wind blows cold. When winter showers bring forth green growth everywhere else, here the earth does not yield. It is as if the ground has been poisoned by what was buried here in secret a long time ago. Of all the graves I have visited, none have made me look over my shoulder the way this one did. In 1921, the country was enthralled by the murder trial of Louise Peet. She was accused of killing retired Arizona miner Jacob Denton and forging his signature to drain his bank account. Denton mysteriously disappeared in June 1920, shortly after Louise began renting his 14-room house in Los Angeles. She concocted wild stories to explain his sudden absence like that his arm had been severed during a fight with a sword-wielding attacker, and he was staying away until a suitable prosthesis could be made. Perhaps feeling the pressure from the inquiries about her landlord, Louise moved back with her estranged husband Richard in Colorado, with whom she had a four-year-old daughter. A short time later, Jacob Denton's corpse was found buried in the basement of his home. He'd been shot through the head. After a three-week trial, Louise Pete was given a life sentence. As she was being led to prison, her husband was by her side for strength, but it was she who had to comfort him. Despondent over their separation, Richard Pete checked into a hotel room and shot himself. Louise had a curious effect on the men who came into her snare. Richard was the third husband to take his own life. In 1906, her first husband committed suicide after catching her with another man. Then in 1913, her second mate killed himself after Louise implicated him in the robbery of valuables from his place of employment. During her incarceration, Louise trusted the care of her daughter to her closest friend, Margaret Logan. Logan was convinced that Louise was innocent and lobbied for her release. Finally, in 1939, after serving 18 years of her life sentence, Louise was paroled. Back in society, Pete lived quietly for the next few years in the employment of her friend Margaret, who regularly signed her parole reports. Louise even found love again when she met retired banker Lee Judson. It seemed like her life was finally on the right track until 1944, when Margaret Logan went missing. The events that followed had an eerie resonance with the Denton case 24 years earlier. After Margaret's disappearance, Louise had her elderly husband, who was suffering from dementia, committed to an asylum, where he died a short time later. She told neighbors that he had disfigured his wife's face in an attack and that she had gone away to have plastic surgery. At this time, the Department of Corrections noticed that Margaret's signature was being forged on Louise's parole reports, 
and to cash checks at her bank. When they came to investigate, the body of Louise's benefactor was found buried near an avocado tree in her backyard, proving the old adage that no good deed goes unpunished. Louise explained that Margaret was murdered by her husband before he had been committed. She claimed to have buried her out of fear that, given her history, she would be blamed for the murder. Louise and Lee Judson, who by then was her fourth husband, were arrested. A jury of 11 women and one man didn't buy Louise's story, and she was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to death. Spouse Lee Judson was cleared of any wrongdoing and released. Afterwards, in keeping with the tradition of three prior husbands, he climbed to the ninth floor of an L.A. office building and leapt to his death. On April 11, 1947, Louise died in the gas chamber at San Quentin Prison. She was the second woman to be executed by the state of California. Her body was returned to Los Angeles and quietly buried somewhere near this spot where the grass doesn't grow.